G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, today we might just circle back a little bit and see what that guy's doing. He's been really quiet, maybe he's missing us, like that's five days with no videos. He must know what to do. Anyway, he thinks he knows science. He claims to be right. And he says he will take down his channel if anyone proves him wrong. And to that end, he's given us three proofs that he claims will show us that the world is flat. But do they? Let's have a little bit of a deep dive into that. But first, some required mocking and trolling just for the amusement of the troops and myself. Watch this dumbass. This ass I think he's talking about, yeah? Anyways, just um, making a quick video, making a count on the uh, score here. It's still no, 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 Wally. Did you do this? Wally, why did you do this? I said it's zero to three. Oh, and this made me lol a few times too. When that guy looks at the likes and dislikes ratios on my videos, and then on his, and a little tear streams down his eyes, I wonder how does he rationalize it? Just have a look. This is what's known as cognitive dissonance, or probably more likely, a rationalization the size of a planet. Let's take a look. 399 to zero. To zero, YouTube, your algorithm is getting a little obvious. Let's see what the 399 people thought was great. And zero people had the ability to distinguish that this is garbage. You can see that he wants so bad for this not to be real. He believes YouTube is doing it. Even when he sees that as he clicks the dislike, the count goes up the correct amount, faced with the facts, he just makes another excuse. This is classic heart ruling the brain again. Okay, now to the three proofs to rule them all. Let's see, which one will you do first? Perhaps the moon proof, hey? Let's have a look at this. A daytime full moon. Yes, let's have a look at that. I have a daytime full moon. I've modeled, proved it doesn't work on the globe model. The crux of that guy's claim is that the full moon is visible in the middle of the day, hence daytime full moon, hence the Earth is flat. But the thing to note is that the full moon is a point in time. It's, in this case, it was actually 1615 UTC. So before that, the moon is waxing and directly after that, the moon is waning. It's just a single point in time when it's a full moon. Same goes for new moon. But we do tend to assign the term full moon to a whole day, the whole day in which the full moon happens. Now, the only reason that the full moon was above the horizon at 1.25 p.m. was because this was Stockholm, and Stockholm is quite far north. And in 2005-2006, this was the major lunar standstill, which, if you remember from previous videos, means that the moon was at its maximum northiness of 28 degrees which basically means the Earth's inclination of 23 and a half degrees and the Moon's inclination to the Earth orbit of five degrees was being added together. And that gets about 28, 28 and a half degrees. Now I just had a look at Wade's Underworld in his brilliant Crescent Moon video. So if you haven't seen that, do yourself a favor and go and have a look. And if you're not subscribed to Wade, make sure you are by the time you finished watching it. Because Wade is gonna have a lot more really good stuff coming. Anyway, Wade went and made me a couple of little um, animations for this thing here. So he's basically gone and had a look at Stockholm in 2005 in December. And have a look at those angles. Look where the moon is and look where the, the sun is. So you can see that the moon is above the... Um, you can see that the moon is visible for like 16 hours of the day. And we said, well, what happened if you go about 500 to 1,000 kilometers further north? Or 
Oh, now this is where it gets really interesting. See, now that the moon is visible for the full 24 hours, and I love how it almost disappears below the horizon, but doesn't quite. So how about that, that guy? Just tie a knot in it. And I also wanted to show you that this coming full moon at the North Pole, the moon is going to be up all day for a full 24 hours. I think that um, that guy's issue is that normally, like at the equator, you can only see the full moon near sunset. But in this case, you can see it right a lot earlier or a lot later. And the other question I want to ask you then is how can moving closer to the North Pole produce more visibility of the moon? Surely you're moving away from the moon on one half of its circuit and closer to the other. I can understand how you can see it a little bit more on the north side, but what about on the south side? So why is it when you're standing at the North Pole, you can see the whole moon? But yet you can't if you go a little bit further south. I think you've got a bit of a curvy problem there, mate. Well, I'm going to call that number one done. There is absolutely no reason why that moon is anything to do with uh, breaking a globe Earth at all. Totally normal, totally expected, and totally fits the ball earth model sorry that guy you got nothing you got nothing except you got me wally gradient of a gas or fluid with no container debunks the globe model okay gas pressure pressure with gradient without a container too easy barely an inconvenience firstly we're going to remind that guy that he has already acknowledged that there is a pressure gradient the weight of the atmosphere above creates pressure below, just like swimming in a fucking swimming pool or being in a dog pile. Common sense. To have gradient of a fluid or gas, you're going to need a container. He just simply thinks that it needs a container. Boy. Okay, so, and if anyone doubts that there is indeed a pressure gradient in the atmosphere, then just check out this video by me old mate Wolfie. So one of the apps I have on my Samsung phone is called GPS Essentials, and it has a customizable dashboard, and you can see one of the parameters I have there is air pressure, currently showing 1,008.50 hectopascals. Now that is using the phone's internal barometer. So let's put the phone on the floor, take a reading, 1008.62, I will now lift it above my head, and there you can see 1008.40, so it has reduced by more than 0.20 of a hectopascal. So we are definitely seeing a pressure gradient even in this hotel room. The pressure near the floor is more than it is near the ceiling. And therefore we have a pressure gradient even in this room. We have a higher pressure existing alongside a lower pressure. It's only a small difference, but it is a measurable difference and yet we have no container holding the higher pressure separate from the lower pressure. Oh, and don't you think that Wolfie just proved that there is a gradient in his room? And don't you think that that is not a container of any sort? I think I'm going to call number two already done. Thanks, Wolfie. That was way too easy. 
And as for that lame idea that there is a container somewhere around the atmosphere, I would just like to point you to these things, you know, meteors, meteorites, whichever one is which. They show that there cannot be any container above the Earth at any distance at all. Because as we know, meteor showers are all very well known. They show up each year at exactly the predicted time and date. Why is that? Well, because the comets that cause them leave a dusty trail, leave a dusty trail in the comet's orbit. And the Earth's orbit intersects that as it goes around the sun and it punches through all that little bits of dust, gets sucked into our atmosphere, light up and cause meteors. Well, during a recent lunar eclipse, a large chunk of space stuff smacked into the moon and we all saw the flash as it ploughed into the moon's surface. Well, then the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter was able to pick up the impact crater later too. So it saw where the crater was. So I think that is um, container busted too, don't you? You got me, Wally. You're killing it. And finally, the compass measures magnetic declination, proving the flat Earth as well. I've asked you to do it. Demonstrate it. Measure measure uh, declination on a globe using a compass. I'll take down my channel, Wally. What's that? You can't? Oh, okay. Now that brings us to magnetic declination on a globe. This one I love. So, I went and got myself a better compass. Thanks, Wolfie, for that. Now, I lined this one up, a couple of fixed points, to show where magnetic south is or anti-north, as that guy likes to call it. So, in my yard, that was between this post and that post, and there we go. So I can set the camera up there when it's dark. So, I set up the P900, flat earth camera of choice, lined up the centre of the frame to be pointing due south. I also measured the distance from the pool fence to the camera, and got 5800 millimetres, that's 5.8 metres for you little imperialists in America and the fence verticals are 75 millimeters apart now doing a little bit of trig I was able to work out that each vertical is 0.74 of a degree which means that 11 degrees is around 15 verticals I counted that far across to the left and put a marker on the fence and you'll see why in a minute now I waited a few hours for the dark to come and for the moon to get lost a little bit now, the P900 creates beautiful time-lapse images that go for 150 minutes. That's 2 hours, 20 minutes, 2 hours, 30 minutes. And that creates a nice 10-second video. And any bright lights will stay right to the very end. So at around the 120-minute mark, I got my shaky torch out. Cheers, Antonio, you clown. And I painted the fence and the tall pole at the back with the bright light from the camera. Now you can see that the camera is still aligned on magnetic south. I also used my green laser, not the blue one, but the green one, to point out where magnetic south was and where 11 degrees due east of south was, or would be. So the laser was above the camera, so that sort of shows it as a downward pointing line. In hindsight, it might have been better to have the laser beside the cameras, would have looked a little nicer. Next time, guys. Those two green lines are about 11 degrees apart and diverging. So that guy, everyone and his dog can see that magnetic south is 11 degrees from the center of rotation. That means I'm demonstrating magnetic declination on a globe, on the globe. Now, I research this subject quite a lot, and this is exactly the way the magnetic declinations are measured all around the world, both north and south of the equator. Oh, so that guy, the center of rotation is about 28 degrees above horizontal as well, which is exactly the same as my latitude. Well, fancy that. So what do you say to that, that guy? I think that's number three busted, don't you? You got me, Wally. You're killing it. No, 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 not that. If facts were string, I would be able to. Just tie a knot in it. Well, according to your own words, you want to go and take that channel down. But of course, I don't want you to take your channel down. I want you to be embarrassed by it for the rest of your life. And may your grandchildren look at this and go, Granddad, did you really think that? They'll probably look at this while they're on their way to Mars one day. But what I do need you to do, because I've now, I've now properly beaten you, is 
remove all blocks. That's it. Well, that guy, what Wally wants. Oh, let's hashtag that. What Wally wants. Hashtag what Wally wants. So anyone going to do a, a link run, probably for the last time, you can hashtag what Wally wants. Don't have to delete. You can delete as much as you like. As In fact, I want you to delete everything you want to delete. Because if you remove all blocks, you're going to be as busy as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest, aren't you? All those deletions you're going to have to do. So how about it? I've beaten you. Now just remove all blocks and you can keep your little channel, mate. Not a problem. Now, because I feel pretty good about myself, I just saw there was a flat earth pilot who needs a little bit of a slapping. So I might go and do that too. So if you enjoyed what I've done here, how about you give me a click, a like, a subscribe. Even go and give way to click on the like and a subscribe too. He's a good bloke. Thanks, guys. Now, where's that flat earth pilot? Let's go and give him what for. So we're just going up to the cockpit of a private aircraft and we're going to ask the pilot what shape the earth is. Hello, Mr. Pilot. Oh, good day, mate. Where did you come from? Oh, I'm just down the back of Burke, mate. Oh, fantastic. Well, I've got a, a question for you, and, and you can be honest with me. Oh, of course. What shape is the Earth? Oh, mate, it's flat, mate. It is flat. Oh, absolutely, definitely flat, yes. So you're flying across a flat plane. Yes, yes, and, you know, we, we, we never dipped the nose. No, know? I didn't think so. I thought you might be able to feel that. No, That'd yeah. put everybody through the roof of the aircraft, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're just always flying flat, mate, except when we go down to land, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I don't want to waste too much of your time, so thanks for that. Okay, no worries. All right. Yeah.